I hope you are ready for today's video because it's going to be marvelous. I hope you are ready for today's video because it's going to be marvelous. <sighs> Do you see what I have to put up with every single day? Hello fellow Hearts of the Blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to another basing tutorial. In this basing video I'm going to show you how to paint marble bases. I have chosen pink marble because honestly there weren't any pink marble tutorials out there, but you can adapt the technique shown here into any color that you want. So let's get cracking. As you can see, we're starting from a base coat of Pallid Witch Flesh. And for our first step, I'm going to take Gilliman Flesh and I'm going to thin it down a lot. You can either use Contrast Medium or Lamia Medium. I'm using Lamia Medium myself and I'm thinning it down to this consistency. As you can see, almost no paint there. And what I'm going to do is take a dry brush, this kind of rounded ones, or any a big soft brush. And I'm just going to stipple it down, making patterns. And the idea is to build this texture through a lot of layers and you only have to basically maintain the direction of those patterns in each tile. Choose a tile and just do this. And again, you will have to build this a lot through layers. You can always, of course, take a regular brush and just draw those patterns with the brush, just like this. You want to create a bit of a wavy kind of feel like, um, you know, like waves, like the, um, like a Milky Way kind of stars, kind of, you know, nebula kind of effect. And it's very important to maintain the same orientation in each uh, tile, but only for each tile. You need to leave this to fully dry before doing another layer. And the idea is just to keep building this color over several layers very slowly until you are more or less happy with it. When you are more or less happy with the Gilliman Flesh, you can move into a mix of three parts Gilliman Flesh with one part Volupus Pink. Again, thin down with Lamia Medium a lot. And I will just do the same, but building this uh, more pinkish color. So I'm glazing this. You can stipple it down. I will probably do a round of stippling uh, once this is dry or in between layers. And I will keep building this until I'm happy with this color. Our applications of the mix of Volupus Pink and Gilliman Flesh are now more or less dry, dry enough that I can do the next step. This will be to take that same mix, this is three parts Gilliman Flesh, one part Volupus Pink, but this time it's pure and I will start making the uh, veins of the marble. And you want to place those veins more or less where these um, darker strips are and you want to make them very thin. Think about us like kind of a lightning. I will highly recommend you take a look at some reference pictures. And again, maintain those lines throughout the slabs.
I finished painting all the veins and I'm very happy with it but I want to add a bit more color to it. So I'm going to take the same mix as again the same mix we're working with three parts Gilliman flesh one part bulbous pink and filling it down again with Lamy medium and lot you can see it there. It barely registers and I'm going to do an overall glaze with this over all the panels. This will help bring a bit more color into it. I will maybe do a, another layer if I feel like I want a bit more color, but this should help us bring everything back, get a bit more tone to the marble. So I ended up doing another coat over all the marble just to bring out the color and you can see it looks much better, much pinkier, more unified, but at the same time has a lot of depth. And I'm going to add even more tones and for this I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia and I'm going to glaze this again using Lamy and Medium, turn this into a very thin glaze and I'm going to add some yellowy tones that a uh, pink marble usually has. This will be very subtle. You can see I'm adding a bit of this yellow here and there, put it in uh, next to a darker bit, but sometimes also into the lighter parts. You know, uh, you have to be random here. Random is very uh, important for marble because it doesn't follow a, like a strict pattern. So uh, the more randomness you can add into it, the better it will look. So that layer of Seraphine Sepia is now dry enough and, and I can continue. And I'm going to add another more color into this and this will be Eshin Grey. If you look at pictures again, look for reference of real marble and you will see that Pink Marble has some grey um, veins, some grey spots. So I'm going to add this particularly into the, um, the uh, darker lines where two lines meet, things like that but just into the, uh, into the pink lines, like that. Our last tone has been added to the marble and it's time to, um, I want to add a bit more depth, even more, um, but this will be going back to palette which fresh, I'm thinning it down a lot with Lamia medium. You can see here, it's almost not there. And this, uh, I'm using Lamia medium, because it will help the paint stay together and not turn into um, a mess uh, of, of coffee staining. And I will do some more lines of this, uh, just here and there, some dots, some lines, um, like marbling on top of the other uh, marbling that is there. This will be super subtle. And you can build this uh, slowly, or you can, if you feel braver you can add a bit more palette with flesh and try to build this a bit quicker but the best results will always be slower with that done it's now time to finish our base and for this we need to shade any cracks and any lines in between the marble tiles and for this i'm going to use agrax earth shade so very simple you've used agrax earth shade a lot so just run this in between the tiles to create the separation. And if you've uh, sculpted any cracks in between the marble tiles, as I did, well, it's time to shade them using Agrax Earth Shade. Now to finish off the base, I'm going to edge highlight all the tiles and all the cracks. This will finally help bring everything together and it will help make it look on par with our painting minis at least for me because i do a lot of edge highlighting so if i do an edge highlight on everything but not on the vase it will look weird and out of place so it's just a matter of going around edge highlighting all the details I said I was done with the highlights, but I was lying, of course, because I can still go one more. This is white. So I'm just going to do small dots of pure white in the corners of the tiles and on the cracks.
and with that last step done, our base is painted. And I highly suggest that you do this, this kind of basing to do a black rim because it, it really helps bring out all the color and texture that you've done on your bases. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Do you like my videos and want to help me make them? Well, there are several ways you can do that. You can follow me on social media. You have the links to all my social media in the description below. You can also check out my affiliate links in the pinned comment of this video. Use those links in your next hobby purchase and help me. That any additional cost to you. I finally have a link for the brushes that I use down there. Don't forget to check the merch that you can see just below this video in the shop tab of my channel. But most importantly, there is Patreon channel members. You have the link to my Patreon in the description below and the pinned comment of the video. Or if you prefer, you can just click the join button below this video. Patreon and channel members help me do all the cool projects that I want to make and help me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me and you will get something back for generosity. As I said, guys, thank you very much for watching and a special thank you to Heather Amster, Lounge X Mundi, Nikonas Furnell. Terrainosaur, Christopher Moret, Javi Mota, Kim Anderson, Michael Boye, Table Miniatures, Thomas Ustergaard, Veldrain, Victor Domina, Equitas, Harondel, Carlos Rivera, Charles Armintash, Chris Fivey, Kieran Murtha, Darcy Farana, Dr. V, Gareth Smith, G Force, Jamie Milligan, Josh Simpson, JT Butler, Kevin Mian, Kevin Sula, Leonard Lindemann, Mark Jarvis, Matthew Miller, Natius Maximus, Oscar Jonathan Thornberg, Samuel Sasha Park, Supernef, Tusted, and Bill Casworth from being the coolest persons in the planet. Be like these fine folks on my Patreon and take control.